All right then, so we've got VTest installed now and next we wanna start writing some tests. So I've already created this new file called examples.js and inside that I've made a function called longest string, which takes in two arguments, string one and string two. And all this function does is check if the length of string two is greater than the length of string one. If it is, then it returns that string, string two, otherwise it returns string one down here. So in other words, it returns the longest string and when they're equal in length, it just returns string one. So this function then takes in some input and returns an output. And now I wanna test the function against different values for the inputs. To do this, we're gonna make a new folder called tests, which is where we're gonna create all of our test files. Now, you don't have to make this folder. You can place your test files somewhere else if you want to, but I like to keep my test files in a separate dedicated folder where possible. So then we're gonna make a new test file to test this function and we'll call that file the same name as the file we already have or module that we already have, which is gonna be called example. And then we add the .test.js extension. And any test files that you make should have this .test part within the file name because that's what vtest will look for. All right, so now we have this file, we can write a new test inside it, but before we write anything, I wanna quickly go over the basic anatomy of a test and talk about some common testing terminology. So when we start writing unit tests, we usually begin by creating something called a test suite, which is just a group of related tests for a single function, module, or feature. And we use test suites to organize those related tests together in one place. So we make a new test suite by using the describe function, which comes from the vtest package that we installed. And as the first argument to that describe function, we pass a string to describe the suite or to describe what we're testing. For example, that could be a function name or the module name or even the module name and then the function name. For example, examples.longeststring. The second argument to that describe function is a function itself. And it's inside this function that we create all the individual tests, which test different things to do with this longest string function. Now we can do that using another vtest function called it. And this also takes in two arguments. The first one again is a string, this time describing the individual thing that we wanna test. And the reason this function is called it, by the way, is because it kind of starts a sentence or statement, right? For example, it returns the longest string. And the second argument, again, is a function which will contain all of the testing logic this time. And it runs this when the test is executed. And in testing terminology, this test plot right here is called a test case because we're testing one single case or behavior of the longest string function or whatever other function we might be testing. Now inside this function, we typically run the function that we're testing and pass it some input values, which we can then store in a variable. And then we'd make assertions about that return value by using another vtest function called expect. So we'd run the expect function and pass in the value we wanna test, like the return value from the function call we stored earlier. And then we chain on one of vtest's matcher methods like to be to describe what we'd expect the value to be. In this case, we'd expect it to be the longer of the two strings that we passed into the function. So this line right here is called an assertion because we're asserting a certain behavior or outcome from the function. And those three things, the suite, the test cases, and the assertions are the backbone of most unit tests that we write. So now let's take all this and try making a few tests in our project. So then we wanna make a new test suite in this file where we can write test cases for the longest string function. And to do that, we need to import the describe function from vtest. So let's do that at the top of the file by saying import and then curly braces. And we want the describe function, okay? And that comes from the vtest package. So now we can use that function down in this file to make a new test suite. And we can invoke that function as well. So remember, the first argument is a string to describe what function or module we're testing. And I'm gonna call this examples.longeststring because we're testing the longest string function from the examples file, okay? Next up, we need to pass in a function as the second argument where we can then write all of our individual test cases. So then let's do that. And then next to write those test cases, we need to import a second vtest function, which is called it. 
So let's do that up at the top. And now down inside this function, we can make a new test case by invoking that it function and describing what particular outcome we wanna test. For now, let's use that basic example, which was it returns the longest string, okay? So as a second argument, we need to pass in a function to put all of the testing logic inside of. Now for this test, we need to invoke the longest string function, right? And pass in two strings as arguments. So let's first of all import the longest string function at the top of the file by saying import, and then again, curly braces, and then the name of the function, which in this case is just longest string. And that comes from dot dot forward slash then into the source folder and then forward slash and the name of the file, which is examples. All right. And now we have that function, we can use it down inside the test case. So let's do that by making a new constant called longest to store the return value. And then we'll set that equal to longest string and invoke the function. And then we need to pass in two strings. So the first one could be Pikachu and then the second one could be Snorlax. So from these two strings, we would expect the first one, Pikachu, to be returned and stored in this constant, right? Because it's the longest one out of the two. And that's what this function is meant to do, return the longest of the two strings. So let's actually test that now by making an assertion. To do that, we need to import that third vtest function called expect. So let's do that up here. And then back down in the test, we can invoke the function and we can pass in the return value longest as an argument. Then after that, we need to tack on one of VTest's matcher methods. And the one we're gonna use is called to be, to assert what we'd expect the value of that variable to be, which in this case would be Pikachu. And that's it. We have now made our very first test and we could run the test script now to see if this test passes. So let's open the terminal to do that. And we're gonna type npm run test and then hit enter. Now, once we do that, vtest is gonna run, it's gonna look for any test files in our project and it's gonna execute any tests inside those files and then spit out the results down here. So we can see that this single test that we wrote now passes. All right, so vtest is still gonna carry on running in the background now, waiting for any changes to the test files. And now if we make and save any changes to them, then it's gonna rerun the test automatically for us, which is nice. So if I change this expected value from Pikachu to Snorlax now, and then save the file, vtest is gonna run the test again automatically. And this time we should see that the test fails. And it also tells us exactly which test failed. So then let's change that value back to Pikachu and save the file again to make sure that the test is passing as it should do. All right, so that's it. We've now created our first unit test, which tests the basic functionality of the longest string function. But there's still more cases for this function that we can test, like if it returns the first string, if the two given strings are the same length, or does it take white space in the strings into account? So let's try making a couple more test cases now in this same test suite. All right, so let's come down here now and create another test case, which we do by using this it function again. And then for the first argument, we'll pass the string returns the first string when both are of equal length. So if we go back to the function, we can see that string two is only returned if string two length is greater than string one length, but if they're both the same, it should return string one. So then let's pass in this function as a second argument. And inside this function, I'm actually just gonna copy this thing right here and paste it down below. And for the first argument, I will this time pass in ditto and for the second one, we'll pass in Pidgey. So they're both five characters in length, right? And because we return string one, where they're both the same length, then we should get ditto back, right? So let's make an assertion down here by saying expect, and we'll pass in the longest again. And then we'll say that should be ditto, like so. Now I'm gonna save this file and open up the terminal. And now we can see two tests have passes, including this one right here. Now, just one thing, I wanna show you, we don't always have to have a separate line for this function call. If this is just returning a simple value like a string, then we can just invoke that directly inside 
this expect call like this. And since it just returns a value when it runs, we're just expecting the return value of this to be ditto. So that is exactly the same thing. So if I save this again and open the terminal, we should see everything still works. All right, so let's do another example. I'm gonna make a new test case down here by saying it and invoking this again. And this time we will say it handles empty strings. So what happens when one or both of the arguments are empty strings? So let's create a function here to write the assertion in. And what I'm gonna do is the same as this thing right here where we invoke the function directly inside the expect function. So let's say, first of all, expect, and then we'll say longest string, and we'll pass in an empty string for the first argument, and then we'll pass in Mario for the second argument. Now, what would we expect this return value to be? Well, there's still two strings, right? So I would say it should still return this one right here, Mario. So we'll say, expect that to be Mario. Now, before we run this test, I'm going to duplicate this a couple of times and just change these values. Then we'll run them all together. So for this second one, we'll say the first string is Luigi and then the second string can be empty. And then for the third one, we'll test when both strings are empty. All right, so let's save this. Oh, in fact, we need to change these values. So that second one should be Luigi. And then this third one should just be the empty string, right? They're both empty strings and they're both the same length. And we return the first one when they're both the same length. So let's save that now and open the terminal. Hopefully they're all gonna pass. And we can see, yeah, handles empty strings. All of those assertions pass. All right, so I'm gonna close this and do one more example. So let's come down here and say it again. And this time we'll say it ignores leading or trailing white space. So by that, I cannot spell this, white space. So what I mean by this is if there was, for example, a load of white space inside this string right here, even though it might technically be a longer string than this, I would still want it to ignore this white space and return this one because this is the actual word, right? I don't want just white space to be classed as longer. So I want the function to ignore that white space. So then let's pass in a function for the second argument. And inside here, we can say expect and we'll say longest string and invoke that. And then we'll do a string, some white space. Then we'll say ash, some more white space. Um, and then we'll do a second argument. So this second one can just be misty. Now, technically, because we've got a load of spaces in here, this might be more characters, but I'd want it to return that. So I'd expect the return to be misty, right? So let's save this now and see what happens. I'm gonna open up the terminal and we see a fail. So it says right here that it expected Ash to be misty in this test right here. So it's actually returning ash. It received this, but it expected missed it. And that's because the function at the moment is treating these white space characters as actual characters. So this is a chance now when you create a test that doesn't work for you to go back into the test and have a look why it doesn't work. Well, what we need to do for this to work is trim both of these strings. So we can say string to dot trim and what that does is get rid of any white space at the start or end of the string. And we're gonna do the same for string one. So say string one dot trim dot length. And now we're getting rid of all that white space and we're just looking at the two strings themselves. So if we open the terminal again, it should have rerun and now we can see this test passes. Awesome. Okay then, so we've made a few different test cases now and there's just one more thing I wanna show you in this lesson and that is another function we can use called test. And this function is just an alias of the it function. It does exactly the same thing, but sometimes you'll see other developers using this function test instead of the it function. It's all down to personal preference, but I wanna show you that they do exactly the same thing. So make sure we import that test function up at the top of the file and then just replace one of the it function calls with the test function. And once you've done that, we can save the file, which should trigger vtest to run the test again automatically. And in the terminal, we should see that everything still passes the same as it did before, all right? Okay, so now we know how to write some simple tests. And in the next lesson, I wanna talk a little bit more about matching methods like this to be one right here.